Hi folks, today we're gonna talk about virtualization and how an extreme Raspberry Pi 5 can do the job of a number of Raspberry Pis. If you haven't watched the previous video about the extreme Raspberry Pi 5, I strongly suggest that you do so. While playing around with these beasts, a few interesting questions arose. What makes an extreme Raspberry Pi 5 so much better and in most cases even a number of times faster than an average Raspberry Pi 5 with no add-ons? Is it possible to run a virtualization software on the Raspberry Pi 5 and run more than one virtual machine at the same time, especially on Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 GB of RAM? If so, is it possible to run any version of Windows for desktops within a virtual machine running on Raspberry Pi 5? It is also interesting to know whether you can run a Raspberry Pi virtual machine on Raspberry Pi itself. On the other hand, is it possible for a classic PC to run a Raspberry Pi virtual machine? There is also another way of virtualization gaining popularity. What about virtualizing? Just the application and the core of the operating system that supports it. This way you would have been able to install the application image and run it as a container without having to waste a lot of time searching and installing the prerequisites as well as application itself. What if you want to run two applications, each requiring a different operating system? It took me a lot of time to solve all these difficult questions, but it was rewarding in the end. I've started off with Docker, which is not as easy to install on Raspberry Pi OS and other other Linuxes as on Microsoft Windows. Docker Desktop provides an easy to install options for macOS and Microsoft Windows. The same functionality for Linux is only available for Intel or AMD processor based machines. Using a Docker engine without a graphical user interface forces you to use console to write even simple commands like starting a container. Fortunately there is another tool that is provided as a Docker image. It's called Portainer and it has a wonderful graphics interface that resembles the one that you gain with installing Docker Desktop. After installing Portainer, a graphical user interface becomes available on your local machine using your web browser. However, installing more complex applications that run on two or more containers, for example, installing a database container and a container with application logic and graphical user interface may require you to enter commands through a console window anyway. While installing Docker Engine on Raspberry Pi OS, it is important to follow the guidelines on docker.com webpage for Debian operating systems. To make it easier, an installation script is available from get.docker.com webpage. You can simply open it in a browser, grab all the text and copy it into an sh file, for example install.sh use chmod command 777 to make the file executable. The script is made to run on various operating systems and it will determine the type of your operating system automatically. Alternatively, you can use wget command from your console window to copy the contents directly to a desired file. Next, portainer installation is done in two steps. First, you create Docker volume where Portainer will store its data. Afterwards, you run Portainer installation command line, which also assures that Docker engine and Portainer would be started each time you start your computer. Portainer may be installed on a single Docker engine or a Docker engine cluster, where there are more Docker hosts, which can all be controlled by a single Portainer installation. There are also community edition and business edition of Portainer. The latter is required for commercial use. Let's now talk about Docker performance. You can easily run 10 or more containers at the same time on Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 GB of RAM. You are probably now wondering what Docker containers to install on your Raspberry Pi 5. Fortunately, there are many lists of Docker applications available from many internet pages. One of the most interesting Docker applications is probably NetData, which enables you to monitor all the parameters of your Raspberry Pi like processor load, disk load or network data transfer rate. So there are so many of them. And what is interesting is that if you take a look at Task Manager in Raspberry Pi OS, you will see that it's much simpler than the one in Microsoft Windows and it doesn't provide disk rates or data transfer rates from disk and network data transfer rates and so on. It just provides GPU frequency and CPU frequencies and CPU and GPU loads. You might want to have a more detailed data on how your Raspberry Pi 5 is performing. NetData application is a very good dashboard where all 
all this data is available and it is very easy to install using Portainer. Another server application that you might want to have is Plex. It can link you to a number of IPTV stations. You can also watch movies and share your videos to other local network users. So much about Docker. Let's continue with Quick Emulator, also known as QEMU. A classic virtualization server like Microsoft's Hyper-V or VMware Workstation only supports a large number of virtual machines with the same or very similar virtual hardware architectures as the host. On the contrary, QMU is not limited to a particular processor architecture or virtual hardware architecture. It can emulate processors ranging from Intel and AMD architectures to 32 and 64 bits ARM and other architectures. It can also emulate graphic chips, PCIe controllers and USB controllers. QEMU is actually a processor emulator suite with an executable file for each processor and its possible architectures. For instance, if I want to emulate classic PC architecture based on Intel and AMD processors, I must use QEMU system x86 underscore 64 executable file with quite a long line of parameters depending on what exactly I want to emulate. A trusted platform module is required prior to installing Windows 11. Emulating it may require two instances of QEMU to run at the same time and communicate to each other in the right order, otherwise it won't work and Windows 11 won't install. But this may be difficult to do with the command line. Weird Manager application with graphical user's interface is therefore a much better solution. It's easy enough to install and very rewarding to use. It suffices to set TPM module enabled and this is basically all that you have to do. The graphics interface is very similar to the advanced hypervisors like Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware, VMXi. You're able to do more because you have emulation at your disposal as well as all the options that we know from the best hypervisors are also available. For example, reconnecting a USB device from the host to a virtual machine. The only bad news regarding Weird Manager is that it's actually not made for Windows. It only runs on Windows 10 or Windows 11 through VCL services that are basically some kind of a virtual Linux installation that integrates into Windows graphics environment. And now to the final question, how does Raspberry Pi 5 work as a virtualization server? It's much better than I thought, especially for testing different softwares. Everything seems to work and also graphical user interfaces are excellent. They try to hide much of details to a beginner, but for advanced users all the details are available. The only real setback for Raspberry Pi 5 as a virtualization server is that it's only got 8 gigabytes of RAM, which suffices to run one or two virtual machines at the same time. There's also no hardware virtualization support like more advanced processor cores have, and it doesn't matter if you are talking about Intel, AMD, or ARM processors. It's important that you do not exceed 8 gigabytes of memory because if swapping starts, uh, Raspberry Pi usually crashes. This is probably due to lack of cache memory that PC disk controllers have. What about emulating Raspberry Pi 5 on a classic PC? BMU also works on Windows or Linux operating system on a classic PC. It is possible to install Weird Manager, but this is somehow complicated because you have to use WVCL services to do so. So it basically still runs under Linux. It only connects to quick emulator running on Windows. WCL and WCL2 services are only available on Windows 10 and Windows 11 and newer server versions of Windows. Discussing other virtualization options, Vumaware ESXi is a dedicated Linux-based hypervisor which enables you to virtualize the whole Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi 4. A version for ARM64 architecture can be installed on Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 5 provided that UEFI BIOS is available. There has long time been a version of USB BIOS for Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 3, but a version for Raspberry Pi 5 has only appeared this year. It is still under development and somehow experimental. The latest version, Open 3, is also used for Windows 11 installations. We're going to discuss ESXi server in one of the next videos. Thank you for watching. Please press like and subscribe buttons to support the channel and to encourage me to make more videos like this. See you in the next video. Bye.